Hi folks, welcome back to this Let's Play of Europa Universalis 4. I'm Perry. And I'm Kevin. And I'm currently grinding down some mm. some Hungary in Bosnia. Mm. Enjoy. All because I wanted some turkey, but being the holiday season, it is the appropriate dish to have. Unless you're in Norway when it's mackerel. Mmm, yum. I prefer my fish to have been cows. Just call me funny Man. on it. Someday I'll send you a tin can of that. Of my favorite condiment. Serum strong? No, thank you. No, it's no, 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 not that. Not that. Uh, mackerel in tomato sauce. It's a staple. It's a Norwegian staple. And you can get in a tube if you want to. I guess I'll sit back and wait for my money to replenish. Alright, that should be full. You should be full then. <laughs> nah, my expenses have gone up a bit. Your income, though, is so so vastly over... over uh, where the hell are you arriving? Why is the Bosnian army trying to flee north into Bergen, uh, uh, Brandenburg? I have to admit, I do like my income. I like your income, too. That's why... <laughs> that's why the, our border in Asia is wherever you decided it's going to be. Let's see. Not to not con I'm trying to restrict my conquering now. That's kind of sad. Why? You need the next next admin tech. Oh. 23. Gives another 20% admin admin efficiency. How exactly does admin efficiency work? I've never fully wrapped my brain around it. It basically reduces the cost of um, coring and increases the threshold of how much you can hold. In overextension. Oh, okay. And it also increases development efficiency along with it, and that's I mean, cheapens down how much you, it costs to develop provinces. And it, it also applies to diplomatic annexing. So basically, the, all those monarch point costs and uh, thresholds are improved considerably. And that is why, once you get all three of them, you can conquer things a lot faster. And in much bigger bulk. Okay. So that's why you can conquer a lot of land in a lot late game because of that. Especially when you combine it with the Imperialism CB. Yeah, the Imperialism CB is quite nice. Right, I wanted that idea too. Ah. So be ready immediately or... Ah, choices. Choices, why must they be difficult? Well, they're either one thing or the other, so I mean, that's the problem. Ah, fine, I'll take this. It'll set me back a little bit more, but... The Turks sabotaged my reputation. <gasps> because they can. Maybe I shouldn't stand here in attrition. Seems like a bad idea. The thing that scares me with this particular war is I'm, I'm still, like, near full manpower.
My turn to use that. Are you threatening people again? Only Ethiopia. It saves me a war with the Turk. Speaking of, I wonder if they would. No, I don't have any claims. Uh, let's try that. I wonder if the Ottomans are weak enough that they would buckle. I very much doubt it, but... Do, 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 do. Bosnia looks so much better now. Oh, well, let's see. Oh, you took a chunk of that. Okay, fine. So now I assume you're gonna wait for the keep the war with Hungary going going until you've caught all of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I'll grab the por portion of Hungary I want, and then I can tell them to all get the hell off my lawn. <laughs> oh, you're not gonna like the, the sound of this. What? The next Holy Roman Emperor. It's gonna be yes. France. Cool. Not if you plan to actually get into the Empire at some point. You keep... I have never once in this game yeah, okay, said fine, that I plan to get into the Empire. It's always... You, you... Yeah, fine, fine, fine. I'll shut up. No, it's just that if you took a step back going, so what You know, what are you planning to do with the Holy Roman Empire? Like, and what I've done so far has worked rather well. I can't argue that. Ah, good lord. Oh, that's our heir. Oh. Well, that's fine then. Okay, guess. My heir decided to become a perfectionist. Okay. So I guess I have to build everything I can before he inherits. 10% build cost. Doesn't he keep that when he transitions over? Hmm? Yeah. He keeps that yeah, when he that's... transitions over. Yes, of course. But it doesn't apply as long as he's an heir. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, well, the heir is human. Yes, you're calling for peace. Very nice. Go away. <laughs> You're going to call this soon. Okay. We reduced our extension. Um. Yeah. Not race autonomy. I forgot that. There we go. Russian separatists. 
Really? Uh, let's see. Let's give some province to Cossacks. Like that. Oh. That more with the Ottomans they took and they accepted. Apparently you can't push influence above ten percent with Kazakhs from, from giving him land. I'm not quite sure how that uh, faction functions. Never played much with it, but I assume it works something similar to the one I've, to my uh, fourth faction, the Dimmy, in that they never really gain power. Yeah, I just gave the Cossacks a ton of territory and none of it pushed them over the, uh, the last three should have each pushed them over the, uh, the threshold for 40%. Which I could have then used to buy an academic or buy a very qu quality half price military advisor. But no. <laughs> There's enough to wait for a freaking event. Where are Russian separatists planning to spawn? Everywhere. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I have three provinces with unrest right now. <laughs> Morocco, you need to burn in fire. Now we have two provinces with unrest. Yeah, Poland doesn't roll that way. Scotland started the second Scottish conquest of... Okay, Scotland declared war on England. What? There's not enough Scotland left to wage war on England. So uh, Scotland is at war with England, Austria, all their colonies, Genoa, Utrecht. Who the heck is on Scotland's side? Why? Oh, oh, France, that's why. Still not enough. Okay. <laughs> of course not. And nobody can help Scotland on the mainland. So if the British fleet is strong enough, the French will never come to help them. Speaking of, let's go check the Navy. England, what is your Navy like? 35 heavies, I think we can safely say. They'll be safe. Uh, the French have 18, yeah. So unless Britain decide to sail away with their entire army, which they could do, Scotland's going to be in trouble. Sail away, sail away, sail away. Well, it, it might actually work out for them. And of course, France and Austria at war is also interesting. Well, no, war against... kind of just... well, that immediately threw them right back into war with each other. Because mm -hmm. France had been at war with Austria under under uh, my umbrella before that. Come on, come on, provinces. You know you want to. Oh, poop. One more year. Send you guys off to Russia because there's. Pending revolts in Russia. Just a few. I've been... Well, that's their, that's you've got to admit, I've been unusually militaristic for me these, those last few episodes. Yes, you have. I'm impressed. It didn't help that I sat as, as a uh, Austria squeak toy for six episodes. Hey, look! Russians revolted at Moscow. Fort needs 
Ah, yeah. Make your deal. Oh. I'll sell you Cartley, the province, if you accept me taking the three gold nord provinces currently bordering me. Just to straighten out the border there. Oh, the, th the uh, three on the east guess. eastern side of that river. So, uh, Mongerschlag, no Nogay, and Utva. Uh, yeah. That's probably the you see, between Rin and Nogay, the south. Yeah, between Rin and Nogay are are a river. So that's why I was using that as the border. Yeah, that's that sounds fair. And I can always sell you the ones to the north there. So I mean, I'd kind of, I'd kind of like to reach the the Ural Mountains north of yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, that's point. fine. So that, I can sell you the three provinces to the north there. Okay, we can make that river in the Urals our your our your our border. Is yeah, we, yeah, I'm okay with that. So we sell the world under. I mean, I would have liked part of Asia, but at this point, there, there's, I'm. It, you're going to rename it Asia to Mughal. <laughs> so yeah, that sounds acceptable. Okay, Castile, why are you fabricating claims against me? They're adventurous, clearly. They're morons is what they are. <laughs> I mean, I have, I have, tw my standing army is twice their their army capacity, so I can't hurt them, but they can't do anything against me. Oh, okay. Let me know when you're at peace. Apparently, I can't sell your provinces while at war, and of course, you need to be finished with the overextension. Otherwise, that would be a problem. Yeah. So just let me know. Canceling the mis that mission. Da -da -da. Yeah, it should be about Marchish next year, but I can probably do it. No, nah, you're going to be at full lower extension, right? Well, we'll, we'll see. So. Mm. That was awfully nice of Hungary. Or Bosnia, because the two, the two provinces that Macedonia and Epirus that I got from them were their only two with level six forts. It was very considerate of them to, to give me. F oh, I guess they've got one more in Zeta, but no, go away, hungry. So let's see, Scotland, how are you doing? Oddly enough, doing okay. The Brits can't. Yeah, the Brits aren't. Don't, don't seem to be home. Okay. Interesting. They might actually pull that off then. And I can see where the British Navy is. Because the French coast is blockaded. Oh, okay. Yeah, the new block blockading symbols make it much easier. I like how this event is suddenly a choice. Between minus one stability and minus twenty five legitimacy. Oh, I, I like the I like the new version of the uh, the comet event where it's choices between minus one stability and minus one stability and minus one stability. <laughs> but no, what no, event well, did you get? I know my point being the, the, the um, uh, government crises. Oh yeah, so that's minus one stability or minus twenty five legitimacy. Before I would always go with the stability because legitimacy it takes forever to get. But now but with now the strength of the government, military points. Yeah. So it's basically a choice between military points and admin points, and that's an easy choice for me. Yeah. Wait, protect our brethren. Oh, okay. Well, I suppose that makes sense. Dear rebels, rebelling in a province occupied with one. Yep, there you go, France is the Holy Roman Emperor. That's something you don't see very often. And it sucks to speak German in this world. <laughs> well, it is possible to engineer. If, I mean, if you ever tried um, playing as France to get the Burgundian inheritance complete. 
you basically immediately try to get uh, the electors to vote for you. And as soon as the Burgundian inheritance fires, you get everything. Works, works rather well, then. It's difficult to engineer, though. I mean... But it is possible, and unlike Austria, I believe you can inherit while being at war with Burgundy. There is some other conflicts there with Austria when they're at war with Burgundy. I think they have to be at peace for the event to fire, or something like that. <laughs> fire. Do you like to play with fire? Uh, you haven't played enough Hearthstone, I think, to appreciate no. that one. It's been a while since I played Hearthstone. It's a fun game still. Though I vastly prefer the the brawl systems they have added. That's good. I appreciate it. I vastly prefer it because they, whenever they don't have you building your own deck, you just get the deck. Because then it doesn't matter what cards you have. Um, Admin 23. Show off. Show off. Oh, my dear subject, have you? Of course you haven't. There, that, that ends the Hungarian War. <laughs> Only rivals in Malad are Austria and Castile. Should be an easy choice. Oh no, Austria and Castile, those are the only ones I'm allowed, so I have to fill my two slots uh -huh. with the, both of them. Yeah, that works too. We have a hundred power projection. Should be you should be glad that you didn't get France as the only choice. France and me are buds. Yeah, that, that's exactly my point. <laughs> that's when the game engine usually says, "Hey, you guys should be rivals." It's when it usually says, "Screw you!" or taking away your your toys. All right. Corruption's a bit high. Money's a bit low. Maintenance is a bit ewy. Well, Eastern Europe looks a lot better now. You've been working hard for that. Yep. <laughs> sure, I'll take the reduce overextension mission. That's a For some reason, that's something you're going to do right now. I'm just happy to have the, uh, the hit my border with Hungary on their side of the Carpathians now instead of my side. Let me know if when you have the capacity. I have no idea how, how much overextension that province would cost. So it'll be a bit. Uh, it's 15 development. That's uh, um, is it 1% per or is it 2% per development? I forget. Uh, it's more complicated than that. Doing yeah. a mouse over right now. Uh, probably be... Look around late eight, uh, 1689. That's when I should start. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. But 
still, you know, in that war, I should have earlier on, instead of just kicking Austria out, should have taken their one little Russian Russian enclave. <laughs> Always next war. Now the next, then the next. What about Genoa? Them next? Um. Right now, well, actually, no, the Turks are next. I want part of it. I want the western part of Anatolia, if you don't mind. Now, by all means, take it. I'm done going into that area. I want to try to get the Middle East there. There would be bits that are in between my the Levant, territory. But, yeah. uh, the, the Mughal Crescent, and we're also at, at an episode break. Okay, and I guess we're going to take a short break here then, and we will be right back. See you next time, folks. <laughs>